My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I was not able. I had no mother to love me or a father to give me a hug. I was left all alone in the strange darkness. No. Hi, welcome to my show called Inspired Blessings with Jean Marie Prince. And today uh, I have two guests and Angela Calabrese. Did that nice. good, all right. <laughs> nice. And Stephen Orfanos. So thank you so much for being my guest. I appreciate it. Now, the way I actually had met you was the Long Island Christian uh, Film Festival for the first time, okay, that um, Jeanette was uh, in charge of. Did a great job. And it was at the Stony Brook uh, Movie Theater. And I have, you, I know that guests, different Christian artists submitted different uh, works that they did and things like that. So you guys have a, a Forever Change Ministries. It's a nonprofit ministry that seeks to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ by creating video testimonies that change and saved and transform lives. Yes. So <coughs> you did a great job. I, I love the, some of the testimonies that actually I even had Jeanette and Tanisha um, as, as a guest on my show because um, I think testimonies are very important. And so why did you, or what made you get involved with this? Um, well, it all started, I actually always wanted my own TV show. Okay. <laughs> and, and, I, and you possibly I, made. Right, when I got saved, I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to, you know, like Oprah, interview, you know, something like your show. And um, that kind of died down, and then it was 10 years I've been walking with the Lord, and I'm constantly thinking of, new business ideas. I love the Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. So always like trying to create things. So one day I said, I, I want to create something for the Lord. Like I'm constantly dreaming. Like let me dream for Jesus. Right. So uh, I approached Steve because I knew he had some film talents. And I said, Steve, you want to do a video testimonial ministry? And he was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, do you want to be in them? And I was like, no, I think it'll be great. Just let's focus on them. I said, because, you know, I knew there was like almost a little selfish desire inside of me that wanted to be on TV and... So I'm on your website, and I see that you have different um, titles, abuse, or, you know, all, all the different things that people can be able to relate maybe their situation. And so then you have different um, segments that you're going to air within those tabs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, I think that was Steve's idea. Yeah, so you could go to, like, the different tag, like, if you're dealing with abuse or divorce or adultery, all different topics, you could click on one, and one of the videos uh, will pop up that relates to that topic. Right, so that's, uh, of course, your three W's, and it's foreverchange.us. Yes. And that, that, that's the website. And um, how do you get uh, people to share their testimony? We oh. kind of just think of people's stories we know because testimonies are so powerful. So for me, a lot of times when we first started, and Angela too, we just thought of people who really impacted us in our walk with God. Mm -hmm. And we said we want to film this and kind of show the average Joe, like the average person out there, just how anybody can be changed by God. Right. And, you know, there's a, a testimony ministry called... Um, I am second, mm -hmm. but they focus on famous people. So oh, we wanted okay. to right. film The Ordinary mm -hmm. um, and get their stories out there. Right. And have a local impact of, you know, stories right here in our own backyard, you know, minimally right now on Long Island and however God would grow it, but right now right here. Right, right, right. And, um, you know, so the thing is, is that uh, when did you come to faith? Um, I came to faith when I was 17 years old, so mm -hmm. I'm 29 okay. now. Now, usually 17, you know, can be selfish, prideful, uh, yes. da, da 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 So what made you... Uh, In my prime. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so what made you say, oh, I want Jesus? Yeah, uh, well, my uh, long story short, my aunt was sick with spinal meningitis, mm -hmm. and she had a healing miracle. Um, but in the hospital, we met a Christian woman who today, she's with the Lord, um, but I called her Aunt Viv. Mm -hmm. I ended up calling her Aunt Viv at, uh, later on. But she was just some woman in the hospital, and she ended up telling us about Christ, telling us that we were going to see a healing miracle, all for the glory of God and for our family to come to Christ. Surely, 
we saw the miracle. We ended up um, going to church for the first time. Really, I grew up in a Roman Catholic family, but mm -hmm. never went to church. Sure. So after we had the miracle, we went to church, and we started going every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I started my own journey of wanting to know who this miraculous God was that just healed my aunt. Before, he was just, you know, um, a gold necklace on, you know, mm -hmm. on my, uh, my clothing attire. That's mm -hmm. all that Christ meant to me. Mm -hmm. And then from there, going to church, reading my Bible, listening to preachers and sermons, I just hungered for him like right. I never hungered before. I, I could care less. I was 17. Mm -hmm. I could care less about my family. I could care less about God. And so it was really radical transformation of wanting what God wants mm -hmm. and hating what God hates. And it took a while to hate everything that God hates. Yeah. yeah I was going into college. Because so. you're not mature at that point, you know. You're <laughs> yeah. hopefully trying to start, you know, but it's, it's tough when you're still somewhat of a teenager. Yeah, it was very hard. I went right into to college, and so I had one foot with Jesus and one foot in the world. So mm -hmm. it was tough. Well, thank goodness that you're not on the fence anymore. Yes, thank mm -hmm. goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, Stephen, you, you, were you always a Christian yourself? or? Um, I grew up in the church, but mm -hmm. when I got to college, kind of, you know, the demands of college just pulled me away from God and kind of put God on the back, back shelf and started doing my own thing. And I played soccer in college, so I gained a lot of what the world told me, like, this is what you need to be happy, like popularity, friends, going to parties and stuff like that. Um, but then, like my junior year of college, I got injured playing soccer, mm -hmm. and I lost a lot of my friends. The relationship I was in at the time kind of destructed, and um, that's when I started. I noticed my brother, actually, he started going to church again, and I saw he was so happy, and I was really just down and depressed, and uh, I knew he was reading his Bible, so I opened my Bible, and the first scripture I remember reading is Matthew sixteen twenty six. What good is it for you to gain the world and lose your soul? soul right. And I was like blown away. I was like, Jesus could talk to me? Like I thought mm -hmm. it was like ancient, you know? Mm -hmm. And because I never really read my Bible or like tried to take it in, and that was the moment that just really changed me. And my story, I actually filmed my story in the first season, mm -hmm. so you could watch that on the Forever Change website. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it, it is important. And, you know, I mean, the thing is, I grew up, you know, Catholic, went to church every weekend, but I believe in God because I was told to believe in God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think a lot happens, you know, is that when you're growing up, that's what your parents do. Yeah. So I, yeah. I guess I believe in God. Right. You know, but you're really not sure until you really have to come to faith yourself. Yeah. Right. And it has to be your own personal experience. Right. Now, um, so you're going into your third season of this uh, show? Yeah, so we have... Um the third season out now. Mm -hmm. It's not fully out, so season three is out. Uh, a couple episodes are released. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, please tune in to the, the website, which is foreverchange.us, or the Facebook, or the YouTube. Right, well, right now I'm going to just play a little clip oh. of uh, mm -hmm. the intuition. Is this the season three that you gave me? Yes, yeah, season three. So it's the trailer. Uh, exposing what's to come in season three so some of them are already released mm -hmm. and the rest are still coming okay. out so i'm going to show my viewers now season three of forever changed great i was taught to be a good person to not steal to not kill but i never heard anything about my sin needing to be paid for i was raised as a muslim and islam is considered one of the highest sins to convert from islam to christianity I'm Jewish. We don't ask Jesus into our heart. But I began to feel more Jewish after coming to faith in Jesus. Believing in Jesus is the most Jewish thing a Jew could ever do. And I had a bottle and I had some pills. I actually barricaded the door shut because I didn't want anybody to come in. I didn't want anybody to be able to save me. He said, what kind of mother will you be if you bring a child into this world where the father doesn't want them? What about an abortion? It's either me or this child. You have to pick one. I was leading the congregation in worship. The truth was, I was really a fraud. Deep inside of me, my life was completely different. I really had no desire in my heart to live for God. I was living for me. 
And the life that was going on the inside and even the outside was very different from what people saw on Sunday mornings. I remember asking God, why me? Why do I have to have a child with a disability? You know, maybe I was being punished that somehow this was God's way of punishing me for leaving the church or turning my back on God. What I didn't understand was that <laughs> it was actually God's way of bringing me back to church. So oh, yeah, so that was a great uh, trailer for people to see, yeah. and um, and uh, great uh, c what is it, cinematography or, or yeah. the fact that you there's did. A, there's a lot of diversity in this season. You know, we have a lady who's Jewish, came to faith in Christ, a Muslim, mm -hmm. um, which I find very interesting. Yes, because they can be as passionate about their faith as we are as passionate about our faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so many times you have people when you are witnessing to them and telling them about Christ, at least in my experience, they've said, you know, well, what about all the other religions? Mm -hmm. well, well, have you done your research about the other religions? You know, how do you know that Jesus Christ and Christianity is truly the truth? And so it's great to encounter people with different faith backgrounds like Judaism, like Islam, and to see them say, yes, I know Judaism and I know Islam, but I met Jesus Christ and I choose to follow him. It's so powerful. So we actually, one of our goals is to, you know, get all the different religion uh, backgrounds onto the show, God willing. So when you're talking to them, it's pretty much as if you're just letting them speak where you're not really asking them the question that you don't have to be as informed to know, oh, do I know the Quran? Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm no. You're letting them speak. Yep. What, they, what they've what they come across and, and, of course, sharing their testimony. Yep. Now, um, what testimony would you say is the most powerful that you've uh, interviewed? I think um, a guy in the current season right now, Chris, <laughs> he, um, he was basically going through a rough time in life and he was about to get a divorce with his wife and he flew out to California to try and get a job to hopefully save his marriage in the San Diego Police Force, I believe. And um, he was, he like failed the exams and the test and he, he wasn't going to get it and so he was out there like lying to his wife saying, yeah, I passed and all this and he, um, he just knew he couldn't go back home. He, he couldn't, he said he couldn't face it and mm -hmm. he started having suicidal thoughts and he planned on taking his life and he actually met a lady in the elevator who just looked at him and said, don't do it. God does not want you to take your life. And I think that really hit me because it's like he just I mean, you, you, you think about it, you know, it, it's like a total stranger is telling you that and it's like, how did you know? But yeah. only God, that had to be God to mm -hmm. interfere yeah. like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with Steve. Um, but all the, the testimonies are powerful because I mean, you know, you ask, that, it's a hard question. You hate to say one is more powerful than the other because any time God hand, God's hand moves, it's mighty. Mm -hmm. So whether, you know, he takes this and puts it over there or takes this whole thing and puts it over there, it's always a powerful work. Um, but Chris in general, who Steve was just talking about, um, he's just someone when I get around him, and I encourage people to, to watch his episode. Um, you just weep. Hey, maybe I should because have him as a guest on my show as well. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's why I he's felt so when Holy I saw Jeanette, Jeanette and Tanisha's yes. uh, testimony. You yes. Know, that you, you could just uh, sometimes be able to feel that transformation of people. Yes. And what it done, you know. So, I mean, this must have even increased your faith as you're taping and as you're listening. And it just must be increasing your faith even more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I'm just sitting there, like, blown away at what God can do with anybody, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. He'll text me when he's editing, and he's like, I'm just sitting I'm here crying, crying right now. <laughs> Don't tell anybody that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, quite honest, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> No, it's, it's really, it's cool, it's powerful. Every time we, I get to sit there with the person, and then also when we look at the final product after Steve is done with it, I'm always like, reminded this is why we do what we do it's so every time you watch a testimony it's so refreshing 
-hmm. It's like a breath of fresh air of what really is truth and reality because every day we're bombarded with such you know it, it's uh, I've uh, go, growing up I've always um, liked reading true stories mm. I like reading the Reader's Me Digest because they always had true stories in Me there too. and uh, I like watching true movies yeah like you know sometimes Based my, my husband story. would be like Oh, Lifetime, I'm like, yeah, because sometimes they got true stories, you know? <laughs> so that's why I like the Bible, because it's a true story, yeah. you know? And that's why I've got the passion, and uh, that people should know the fact that God can be able to change a life, you know? There's nothing too hard for Him. No, it's not. You know? And it's out there for people to know. Are you on social media? Yeah, so website? we're an internet-based social media nonprofit organization. That is how we are pumping out these testimonies. It's mm -hmm. through the internet. You know, we know everyone's on their tablets, everyone's on their phones 24-7. More than maybe possibly the TV nowadays. So we wanted to get on that screen that they are holding in their hand, you know. Uh, For me, like, I always wanted to share my story with people, but it's hard when you're, like, hanging out with someone or in public, like, mm -hmm. to just sit down and be like, hey, listen to my story. So, like, I just like the fact that we could capture someone just if they're just sitting in their bedroom and it's kind of just like a heart to heart with whoever they're watching on the screen, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just think you have a great impact <coughs> in that way. Right. How long does your, um, if you would interview somebody, how long does it usually take, you know, do you, does it, it one day event? It depends on the person if, if yeah. they're prepared or not. Um, yeah. Some people, like Susan we just did, she was done in 15 minutes and then other people would talk for two hours. Yeah. And that makes the editing a little rough. I would, I would, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so he, sometimes he'll have. So, so how long is your segment usually? Yeah, so he'll have two hours of footage sometimes or an hour, and he has to cut it down to a 10-minute or 12-minute video. That's what we, we try to keep it around 10, 12 yeah. minutes. Yeah, some go to like 15, but the really long ones. And, yeah. But mm -hmm. try to keep it short. Yeah. Right. We know a lot of people look at the time on things and say, oh, I can't watch this too long. So I like right. to try and keep them shorter than longer. Right. right. So anyway, so we were saying before, right, so how are you getting out there? Social media, Facebook, mm -hmm. sure mainly Facebook. Um, and Forever Change, what's it under, like, the title of your Facebook Yeah, you can Facebook search Forever page. Change on Facebook. Yeah, or the, the, the social media handle is at FCM, because Forever Change Ministries, at FCM Testimonies. If you put at FCM Testimonies into Google, or YouTube, or Facebook, or Twitter, or Instagram, that handle, that social media handle, will always bring us up. Right, 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 right. No, that's good. Uh, and, um, you know, that's, that way then, and how do people go about wanting to get their testimonies on your show? Um, if someone's interested, they come up to us, um, and whether through email or phone or, call, you know, or in person, and then um, we have an application process because uh, Steve and I, you know, and everyone else who's part of Forever Change agree that, you know, it's important that whoever's on the show is truly bearing fruit. Like for instance, when I was 17, even though I was a Christian, I had no business being on Forever Change. Um, only because I was a new Christian and too much of my life was contradictory to scripture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we have an application process. We don't just let anyone come on the show. Right. Um, there's an application process and and there's interviews and, and, and people, and you know, our team has to agree and be, um, you know, anonymous vote on, yes, this person should be on the show. Right, so where would they find that on your website? Uh, they could just email us, and there's yeah. a contact yeah, us. It's, 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 oh, okay. Contact us, um, message us on Facebook, contact us on the website if they wanna do their story, and uh, we'll reach back out to them and give them an application. Right. So what is your ultimate goal with, uh, with your ministry? Um, ultimate goal, to see God reach as many lost people as possible through Forever Change Ministries mm -hmm. and encourage those Christians who may be in a valley. Mm -hmm. So those that are His, encourage them, and, and those that are lost, save them. That's, mm -hmm. that's the ultimate goal. So now what, you know, what does that look like? How, the how behind that? Mm -hmm. That's in God's hands right now. Right now we're having a Long Island, New York ministry, but we've always said if it could be forever change, 
Greece. Steve is dying Greece. to do a forever change Greece. I'm dying to do a forever change Italy. <laughs> but, uh, we're just teasing. That's just our, our heritage. But, you know, wherever God leads. Mm -hmm. oh, do you have anything? Yeah, I mean, I just always think if one life is impacted by one video, then we already met our goal, kind of, you know, if you can yes. change someone's life just by one person. We've heard stories of how our videos have impacted people already, so. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe you should also, like, have an event. Have you thought about that? Yeah, we've had, we had a one event. Uh, we, f we had our first fundraiser mm -hmm. uh, this past May. It was this year, right? I'm yeah. like, a long year. So we had our first event. Uh, we had it at the Fox Hollow. Oh, okay. And um, it was pretty cool because we were nervous about the hall said, you know, you needed, like, to guarantee 60 people and we were mm -hmm. nervous even getting those 60 people mm -hmm. but our God <clears throat> is the God who he is he blew that number out I'm smiling because I was so worked up and nervous over mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and with a lot of prayer God blew that number out we had 170 people oh, there wow. so it was a, a great uh, dinner event very nice the Fox Hollow did an awesome job it was a really great event right. yeah and so what you did was you showed some of the um the testimonies. Yeah, we actually seen. showed. Um, yeah, we showed some of the videos. Had some of the people in the videos there who spoke. Yes, yes. And did like a little fundraiser. Steve did a great uh, summary video of season one, mm -hmm. and we showed that. So it was clips of a couple different uh, testimonies, and then like Steve saying, we had we honored the people who were actually in uh, the testimonial videos, and then a couple of them spoke. So it was powerful. Yeah, you know, I see. Um, I'm sure, I guess, do you have where people decided not to have the abortion? I'm sure you, you have people Yeah, we have one that, coming right? out in this season. This season, season three has one. Um, season two has, has two people has who two have people. had abortions, actually. Mm -hmm. right? And season one has one, actually. One of them was my mother. Mm, oh. Really? Okay. Um, so I was supposed to have a, a, another sibling. I only have one brother. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, I technically have another sibling, right. I believe, You'll that I will meet one day. One day. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, now, was that tough to do? You know, tough to interview or tough to... My mom, to see my mom? mom? Yeah. yeah. I remember uh, watching my mom give her testimony and seeing my mom weep. I just started weeping and hearing about it. Mm -hmm. it, it was heavy. Yeah. It was really heavy. Yeah, because that comes close to home. Yeah. So now your husband, he wasn't able to make the show, yeah. but, we, but we'll give him credit. Rob, we love, love you. <laughs> so love you. now, how is he involved with, the, with this? Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm the woman that I am mm -hmm. because God brought him into my life. So he's a great balance for me. So in the ministry, when I have to do administration stuff or make big decisions, you know, my husband's always there with me. Or when we're doing events, <laughs> the the big event that we did this past May, I mean, he was he was the hands and feet behind the scenes. So I would say Rob helps with being the hands and feet behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so he's got to be disappointed that he make this. Yeah, he he's a little bummed out. He's he's a construction worker. He has. Mm -hmm. think it's important for people that are searching for a mate. Yeah, that they yeah. really need to understand that they want to be equally yoked. Faith is number one. Yeah, Steve has, in his testimony on Forever Change in season one, he talks about how he, did you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> did you talk about that? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I thought you did, maybe you didn't. Maybe think of somebody else. Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. But, but really, Steve, though, <laughs> think about it. I mean, are you, are you, I'm gonna assume you're not married. Not married. So what kind of uh, list of well, what do you was, say is your list? Well, I was single for about 10 years, mm -hmm. um, mainly because it's hard to find a Christian girl in this world, especially here in New York. Mm -hmm. So I have a girlfriend now. Okay. She's a Christian, and, you know, we're trying to focus on God and do what's right. <laughs> and, and you know what's a good him. example is for you to you be able to see, you know, yeah, I look Rob. At, I look up to Ange and Rob a lot. Aww. Yeah. Even though she's little, I look up to her. <laughs> <laughs> she looks up to you as well. Uh, uh, yeah, no, Steve is um, a great example to be around because our age, 20s and 30s, mm -hmm. you see people get tired of waiting right. for, the, yeah. for the woman of God or the man of God, right. and they settle. And Steve is one of Rob and I's, you know, one of one of our single friends that 
is standing firm and is like, I'm not going to waver on that. Like, I want a woman of God, which is cool to see Steve over the years not go off that route, stay firm on that, which is mm -hmm. cool. And Taylor's pretty cool, which is his girlfriend right now. Shout out to Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, yeah. yeah. The intimacy that you experience oh, yeah. in a marriage because of Christ. Well, it's also, you're, you're, you're also being best friends. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But it's a whole nother level of that. It's right. amazing, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, it is the fact that uh, you're focusing and you're letting, and, uh, you're letting Christ, you know, it, um, in your family. So this way he helps, he helps you to get through the hard times in your marriage because this, you know, marriage is a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that's why it's good to have, you know, that same equally yoked. Yes. But, um, yeah, so it's great uh, in the fact that Forever Change Ministries okay. and in which... Um, People can be able to uh, to look at and, and uh, hopefully also they'll really uh, learn more about how to get through the trials in life, you know, and they'll see how through the trials with Jesus Christ how they were able to get through it because really it's only by the mercy of God, you know, yes. the grace of God. Yes. Um, so they can reach out to you at fcm at foreverchange dot us yes. to be able to. Um, you know, ask you f to send them a submission, you know, a submission form to be maybe a guest. Right, yep, that's mm -hmm. our email. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then also go on to the social media uh, that we were talking about on Facebook as well. So um, thank you so much for being my, on my show, and uh, it's a great thing that you're doing. Keep it up, because that's what I believe. That's why I talk show, you know. Yeah. Uh, but you may look into it. You may want to. Maybe. And it's not so much of a focus on me. It's really of the guests. So don't, yeah. don't feel like it's like that either. Yeah. You I know? just, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted Something to be like. on camera. So. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> we'll get it. But um, I, I want to also just kind of give you an update with Inspired Blessings and been blessed that uh, Blue Mountain Greeting Cards are right now... Um, have taken my writing, I licensed 16 of my writings, and in which they will have in 20 plus stores across the country to test to see how well they do. If they do well, then they'll, they'll make it to a larger size card. And, and in which, uh, if you see my butterfly in the back and my name on the inside, is to make someone feel special. I appreciate it. Along with, then I've got my own original uh, line of um, cards. So if you go onto my website uh, and uh, go to the shop tab, go to the retail stores that are carrying it. Um, would love it, and um, I've been getting really great feedback, and I've been blessed about it. So, uh, again, I'd like to share my testimony through my book along with the CD albums. And, again, and all of this stuff, it's only by the grace of God because I had no experience in any of it. And um, so you can also like the uh, YouTube if you subscribe to it. Then if you miss the interviews, you'll automatically be notified when I download the shows. That's great. And also my Facebook page, Inspire Blessings, and you get the updates as well if you like it. So thank you so much. Keep Inspire Blessings within arm's reach to help give you comfort when others are at a loss for words. Thank you and God bless. For more information on Inspire Blessings book, CD albums, photograph prints, Jean Marie Prince greeting cards and speaking engagements, jeanmarieprince.com, as well as Facebook page, Inspire Blessings for updates, and CD Baby to listen to the songs. Thank you and God bless. To accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer. I know that I am a sinner who needs forgiveness. Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins and purify me. I know that you died and rose again to pay for my sins. I need you to be my Lord and Savior for the rest of my life. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. My life is in your hands, my life is in your hands. You took control when I was young, when I